Hello, Zach Murphy here. Thank you so much for taking the time today to tune to my channel. And I'm doing something a little bit different on the first Sunday of every month. Instead of doing the Bible study series I have been doing, and I'm continuing to do the Proverbs one to date, um, what I am going to do is the first Sunday of every month, I'm going to do a video on communion. So I do ask, you know, if you're able to, you know, get a cracker and some juice or whatever and have that ready towards the end of this short teaching, that would be great. Um, I believe it's important to talk about communion and really explain what it truly means. Because so often in the church we just take it unknowingly the depth of what communion truly is. So before I go any further, let me open up in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity to dive into your word, Lord, and to see what your word says concerning communion, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you reveal your truth to us through your word, Lord. Illuminate your truth as we go through this teaching. Let you be glorified, Lord Jesus, and reveal your love to everybody watching us. For your glory, in your name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> so, communion... You know, some people view it as something that, you know, you do in church every Sunday or the first Sunday of every month or, you know, around Resurrection Sunday and Christmas. But communion with God is an ongoing thing and it is symbolic in the communion meal that the Lord Jesus Christ established with his disciples at the Last Supper. And, you know... We don't want to look at communion as something that is religious or it's a tradition or we just do in a vain repetition at a certain frequency in the church, you know, based upon how often we do it in church. It's something we can do every day. And I want to say this. Communion goes beyond, you know, partaking elements. It's a, a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle we need to cultivate. And... A very good passage that explains this that I want to point out here. I'm going to read it from the Amplified Classic because I just love the translation here. It's in the, in the Amplified Classic again. And it's in 1 John chapter 4, verses 17 to 21. In this, union and communion with him, talking about Jesus, talking about the Father. Love is brought to completion and attains perfection with us that we may have confidence for the day of judgment with assurance and boldness to face him because as he is so are we in this world that's so important right here because as you commune with the father and as you build your relationship with Jesus Christ the Son, the, the firstborn among many brethren, we are, we are sons and daughters of God after Jesus because we are, we are reborn into a new nature through Him. In this union and communion with Him, love is brought to completion. What does the Bible also say? I believe it's in Philippians. It says that He... He who started a good work in you will bring it forth to completion. So in the moment you got born again, God through the Holy Spirit was starting a work in you. When you were born again, you received a new nature inside of you. You had a revelation of Jesus Christ and what he did for you 2,000 years ago. And through that you changed. And, you know, the change isn't instant. You don't snap into spiritual maturity in the moment you're born again. You know, just as a baby is born into this world, a baby doesn't automatically become a mature adult. Uh, a, you know, it has to grow. The child has to grow. You know, it goes through school. It learns things from um, their parents. You know, we have to look at the born-again path as the same thing. There are levels of maturity. And everybody's at different levels. You know, I hope the teachings I put out here reaches everybody at any level, whether, you know, you've been a Christian for a year and you're very elementary in your understanding or you've been a Christian for years and you're very deep in your understanding. You know, we are all on a journey and we can all learn from each other wherever we are. So 
this union we have with God is founded upon love because God is love. And it's a holy love. We don't define God's love based on the world's definition of love. How do you base the definition of God's love? Well, it's based upon his word, not based upon the world's way of that. We want it based upon God's way. It says here in verse 17 that we have confidence for the day of judgment, full assurance and boldness to face him. You now realize this, when you come to know Jesus, you can face God. It says even in Hebrews that we can go boldly before the throne room of grace and obtain mercy. Because Jesus has gone before us. He, had, he has paid the price 2,000 years ago. The penalty has been paid. And it says here, because as he is, so are we in this world. We are to be Christ-like in this world. And too often the church is too busy doing other things. We need to be Christ-like in this world. We need to be going out there. We need to be you know, about the Father's business in this world. You know, the same things Jesus did, we are to be doing. And, you know, that doesn't mean, you know, that we can walk with pride and say, oh, I can do the same thing that Jesus said. No, we walk with biblical humility. We walk with biblical boldness. There's a difference between, you know, how the world defines boldness because how the world defines boldness is often prideful. We want to walk with biblical boldness, which means living empowered by the Holy Spirit. Not being, you know, not having... Um, boldness as the world would, but having biblical boldness. Verse 18, there is no fear in love. Dread does not exist. But full-grown, complete, perfect love turns fear out of doors and expels every trace of terror, for fear brings with it the thought of punishment. And so he who is afraid has not reached the full maturity of love, is not grown into love's complete perfection. So, you know, as you commune with God, you grow in walking in the love of God. You grow in a love relationship with Him. And through that, fear is expelled. You will have less and less fear of man, less and less fear of circumstances. And yes, you know, in your life, you're going to have difficult times. There's going to be challenges. There's going to be trials. But you don't have to fear because you're walking in a love relationship with God through what Jesus Christ did on the cross 2,000 years ago. He died and as, you know, he was buried and he rose victorious over the grave. And he is seated at the right hand of the Father and says we are seated with him in heavenly places. Because of that, we do not have to walk in fear. We can walk in love. And perfect love does not know fear. Perfect love does not know fear. Perfect love only knows peace. It rests in what God has done. It doesn't try to do things on, it, on our own. We're never afraid of punishment because Jesus Christ, he paid the price. He paid the price for us. And we love him, verse 19, because he first loved us. And what did Jesus say? If you love me, you keep my commandments. You can't say you love God and live a life completely contrary to what Jesus Christ commanded. In verse 20, it says, If anyone says, I love God and hates the test and abominates his brother in Christ, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot, God, cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this command, charge, order, injunction we have from him that he who loves God shall love his brother, believer, also. So, you know, we have to walk in love with all people, whether we like them or not. We, you know, if we know God, we know love, because God is love. If you're in a, if you're in an intimate relationship with God through Jesus Christ, you will know perfect love through him. And yes, you know, we cannot walk in perfect love because we're on this side of eternity, but we need to press on towards perfection through the grace of God. Let his grace empower us. And, you know, so often in the church, you know, we focus on, you know, <clears throat> trying to modify our behaviors. 
And, you know, there are certain grounds for that. You know, there are certain things we can do to grow biblical godly character. But one of the things that is neglecting most churches is discipling people to actually pursue a relationship, a walking communion relationship with the Father. And how do you do that? You get in his word and you meditate upon it. You just don't just read the check the box for the day. You take your time with it. You chew upon the word. You feast upon the word. Cry out to God to reveal his heart to you as you read his word. Spending time in prayer. Spending time in personal worship. Spending time thinking about the things of God. Thinking about the things that are of good report. We have to cultivate a love relationship with the Father if we want to see true change in our lives. It's so vitally important. And you know, it's a fellowship with God. It's a fellowship with God. Know this, that everybody is invited to fellowship with Him. You go through the door of Jesus Christ. There's no other way to the Father but by Jesus. You know, people try people, some people of the world say, oh, you know, there's many paths to God. No, there's only one way, and that is Jesus Christ. That is what Jesus Christ did. He is the only way to the Father. And we are invited to fellowship with Him. We don't create a fellowship with God. The fellow, we, we receive and invite the fellowship with Him. We need to respond to fellowship with Him every single day. Every single day. And there's people probably watching us that have never heard the gospel. And the gospel is not about you know having perfect church attendance. Perfect church attendance isn't going to change you. A bunch of, doing a bunch of chores isn't going to change you. Only a love, fellowship, relationship, communion with God is going to change you. Through, through faith alone on what Jesus Christ did 2,000 years ago. And that is the door. That is the way. That is the truth. And that is the life. That is so very important to understand this. And our life, because we are in, in fellowship with Him, because we are in union with Him, our life should echo love to others. And there's going to be times, yes, we fall short of that. I fall short of that at times. But just because we fall short doesn't mean, you know, we throw ourselves a pity party and, you know, focus on our failures. No, we get back up again. We keep moving forward. We keep moving forward. If we fall, we get back up. We go before the Father and obtain mercy. Ask Him to empower us in our weakness. That's what this whole thing is about. It's focusing on Him. It's focusing on His goodness. And when you focus on that, when you behold those things in your life, the powers of this world will become less and less in your life and you will be able to see in your life that you're not given into the desires of the flesh as you walk in fellowship with Him, but that you will give in to the fruit of the Spirit, the, the ways of God in your life. So let's partake of communion here. And, you know, let me, let me pray again, Lord. Lord, I ask you, Lord Jesus, to, to search all of our hearts here, Lord, to search our hearts or reveal anything that stands in the way of our fellowship with you, Lord. And I just ask you to, you know, if there's anything, take a moment and, you know, confess that before God and ask for mercy, ask for strength in that area in your life. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you empower us through your Holy Spirit, that you are our strength. We give you the praise, glory, and honor in your name. Amen. And, you know, when we partake, of this cracker or a piece of bread, wherever you're partaking of, we remember what Jesus Christ did 2,000 years ago. By his stripes, we are healed. And I believe healing is for today. And, you know, yes, sometimes we pray, and, you know, sometimes people don't see healing for whatever reason. And, you know, we can't focus on why, you know, this prayer wasn't answered. We have to focus on God, and we have to keep on doing what we are commanded, which is to pray and to seek his face regardless of the outcome, because God is still good. And he restores all things. Just look in the book of Job. He restored it all in the end. So we have to believe that God's word is true, that by his stripes, that Jesus bore 2,000 years ago, we are healed. 
we are healed through him. Remember what Jesus Christ paid for with his body sacrifice. Partake remembrance of him. And we remember also that the blood of Jesus that was poured out 2,000 years ago washes away all sin. We have to realize in our lives that sin was defeated by Jesus Christ. Sin was defeated, and we should not give place to it. We are called to live a holy life because he is holy. We don't do it in our own strength, we do it through him empowering us through the power of the new nature inside of us through his working in our lives. So as we partake of the cup, let's remember that all of our sins are wiped away through his blood, through his working. As, we, as you go through the way, the truth, and life, Jesus Christ by faith, let's partake. Praise God for the work of Jesus Christ, for our salvation, for our deliverance, and for our healing, and for our wholeness, and for his restorative work in all of our lives. So that is all I have for today. Let me close in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord Jesus, for this opportunity to share your word, Lord. I pray, Lord, that everybody watching this was edifying, that they were built up in you, Lord Jesus, for your glory. I thank you, Lord, that everyone watching us have a desire to pursue fellowship and union and intimacy with you, Lord, through Jesus Christ, through the way, the truth, and the life. We give you the praise, glory, and honor. In your name we pray. Amen. Once again, thank you for watching us. God bless you and have a great week. Remember, next week I will continue the series on the book of Proverbs. If you've been following along, um, there's a playlist on this channel for that, so I encourage you to check out that playlist. And I'll be doing these communion videos the first Sunday of every month in the evening. So once again, thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, and God bless you, and have a great week. Okay, and if you would like to learn more about me and check out my other teachings as well as blog posts, you can go to my website, steadfast-ztm.com. I post on there regularly, and you can also subscribe to a newsletter. There is a page there to look at missionaries. I would encourage you to donate to as well, as well as other links to other teachers of the Word of God that I personally follow myself and I'll encourage you to follow as well and there's some other resources on there for Christian living and studying the Word of God. Additionally, I have a devotional available on the fruits of the Spirit. The print version is currently $7 and the ebook version is $2. I highly encourage you to check that out. It is a very um, fundamental teaching and it's very easily laid out for you to understand and apply to your life. Also, I would like to encourage you to pray for CMI Global. I'm a part of that ministry fellowship there. I'm credentialed through them, and CMI Global is a ministry fellowship that helps equip and establish and strengthen the local church. So please join me in praying for leadership as well as provision and blessing for all the other ministers and churches within CMI Global and the website uh, cmiglobal.info is available for more information or if you would like to donate to them. I'd also like to talk to you about the School of Discipleship through endurehardship.org slash SOD which is where you can check it out. I attended this program, and I'll be a graduate of this two-year program as of May, at the end of May 2023. If you are looking for sound Christian teaching and discipleship, I highly encourage you to check this program. You can do it from anywhere. They do weekly Zoom meetings for you. If you enroll in the teachings are awesome. Um, they will help strengthen your walk with the Lord and help you build a lifestyle of discipleship, which is very important. This is for anybody, whether or not you want to be in ministry or not. I believe this is crucial for any Christian. There is just so much 
given in this school here. It has touched my life, and I know it has touched others, and it's uh, led by Dr. J.P. Price. You can find out more about this school here. I'd highly encourage you to check it out. It's very affordable, very reasonable. Again, I would highly encourage you to check this out, and I'm sure it will be a blessing for you as well, and share it with others. You might know somebody that wants to go through discipleship or go through some training to be better prepared for ministry. This is the place to do it at, and they def Dr. J.P. Price and the other instructors with this program do a very good job of pouring into all the students I know has helped me and I trust it will also help others and be a blessing to others and God is definitely using this program here.